geography and economics history geography and economics okay that's beautiful all right um culture that's yes okay yeah. wes go ahead uh environment environment okay all right so um a round of applause for you yeah that's good that's good now you can see that based on the definition we have given we can see that social studies is broadly divided divided you have under social studies you have um you have government you have history you have um geography you have a little of economics you have economics you have you have so many things political science and all of that all embedded in social studies so that is what exactly you are going to be exploring you're going to be exploring each of these um aspects of social studies a little of each of them however it will be narrowed it will be narrowed to the u.s society yeah the society where we are it's going to be narrowed to the u.s society and we are going to be starting with civic and government civic and government i know you must have heard of government you have a government the government of um you have government in different countries yeah you must have heard of government in different capacity in different times at different times rather so um however however it is important for us to really understand what do we mean when we say government when we say government what do we mean so we're going to be looking at quick definitions first i'm going to introduce the concept of civic and government then we we'll look at some terms which we are going to be using through the um through the lessons okay so um quickly let's do an introduction so so i'm going to be um staying on the us us civic and government class okay this is a us civic and government class i'm excited to explore the fundamental principles of the us government with you okay um i'm not going to do the icebreaker activity because of time right so probably in the next class we're going to get to know um i get to know you okay and um we, we, we get to do this all right so but essentially we want to try to understand the u.s government okay how is this structured right and why is it important for you to know it's very very important for you to know how the u.s government is structured so that you would be able to um fit in into the society now let's go quickly to understanding certain terms we are going to be using okay yeah the, the theme the theme one we're going to be exploring today is civic and government so what is civic what is civic okay so simply put civic care has to do with um you as a person so when you hear the word civic is coined from the word civilians or citizens sorry citizens yeah citizens so you cannot talk about civic education without talking about um citizenship education so um what is civic it has to do with your your responsibilities your duties um your rights and that which is um which you are privileged to as a citizen of a country okay that is what civic refers to civic refers to all that um all that all the activities all the right responsibility that is associated with you being a citizen of a particular country take for instance all right when we talk about um when we talk about the fact that you have the right to vote that is because you are a citizen okay so you cannot you cannot separate the citizen from civic and civic has to do with all the engagements all the activities all the responsibilities of a citizen of a citizen so that's what we call civic all right so all the engagements the activities 
the rights, the responsibilities or duties of a citizen is what we call civic. It has to do with the participation of citizens in the governance of a nation, the, part, the participation of citizens in the governance of a nation. So quickly, um, I want to ask one person, somebody can um, answer for me. Um, how do you participate in the government of your nation? How do you participate? What are, what are the ways or what mention one way you participate in the government of your nation? Yes, anybody? The voting, following the yes. rules and like paying the taxes. Yes, following the rules, paying your taxes. These are ways you participate in the government of your nation. You bring about order. We will elect. Yeah. Will elect who will yes. govern us? Yes. Will elect who will govern us? Exactly. Go. By electing, you are also participating in active governance. Okay, so that's what civic is all about. It has to do with all your activity, your engagement, your participation, when it has to do with government. Okay, so now what is government? What is government? Simply put, government is, um, yeah, somebody wants a body, a body of um, people. Yeah, uh, a body uh, of people. group of people, group of people uh, will a govern and will people. govern us. Yes, a group of people, a body of people, a group of people, a body of people. Now, when you bring these people uh, together, will make the laws. You, yes. Yeah, yeah. So when you bring this group um, together, group of people will make, make the laws and will govern yes, us. Yes. Yes, your baby, you're right. You're right. Okay. So when you bring this group of people together, or the body of people together, they create what we call a system. They create what we call a system. Just like you have your body, you have your ears carrying out a different function. You have your eyes carrying out a different function. You have your mouth carrying out a different function. So also, this body of people come together, though carrying out different functions, they are working in synergy. They are working together to, to do what? To establish, enforce laws, to create policies, regulations, you know, administrations and institutions that will be responsible for making decisions for the corporate or collective good of the nation. All right. That is this group of persons, this group of functionaries, this group of um, this body of people, or this a system organization. As you see me, I'm using so many terms, trying to make you understand that when we talk about government, we are talking about um, different functionaries, different but different um, group of people or bodies coming together to determine, you know, and administrate the affairs of a nation. Okay, so what do government do? Number one, they establish laws, they enforce laws, they, they, they create policies, they, they stipulate regulations within a society. You know, they are, they, are, they are responsible for the administration of resources, both um, physical, human resources. They are responsible for decision making and every form of governance and every aspect of society you have a you have one form of government or the other so there is no society without a government okay so so i i i i believe we all understand that can i move forward yes 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 all yes. right yes so, you can move all right so the next thing i want you to understand when it has to do with civic and government is that you need to understand what is a constitution a constitution all right so in the u.s in the u.s government or in the civic and government that we are going to be studying in the class you're going to be hearing words like constitution right the word constitution is a is a body of 
um, laws or fundamental law. It's a body of law. It's not just one law, but a body of law, different law captured in, okay, this document called the Constitution. And this Constitution is the fundamental law. It is the basic law of the United States. And every other thing, every other thing, the structure of the government, everything that the government is doing, every activity of government is captured in the constitution so it just like they said um okay we'll, we'll get to that let me not go ahead of myself so um constitution is a body of law it's a fundamental law or it is a body of law by which a nation or a group of person is governed so if 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 i philly and um what's the name if if i shabib um leslie and um hussein if we come together now and we decide to form an organization and then we put together some body of rules and regulations that will be binding on everyone in the organization we just formed so let's say we form an organization and the name of the organization is um is um Europe, Europe League, and we say Europe League, that is the name of our organization. And the five of us, or the 10 of us, okay, decide that, okay, we want to put together an organization. We are going to come together and say, okay, these and these, these are the rules and laws and regulations that will be binding. Yeah, you know. All right, all right. Can you hear me now? Leslie, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yes, okay. thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if, if we all come together and we decide to build a company, there are some body of rules and regulations that will be binding us together. So the constitution is that body of rules and laws, fundamental laws that binds everyone in a nation, everyone in an organization, anyone. So when you say constitution, we're talking about that legal document that binds everyone okay everyone including the leader and the lead okay so the next thing i need you to to get to note if you have a note please write them down they are very very important to this topic uh in your gd examination you will be coming across these terms and it's in the, it's, it's important you understand them all right you are going to be coming across terms like the bill of rights the bill of rights is also a document okay it's part of um the u.s constitution is part of some of the important documents in the u.s okay and it has to do with the various amendments and there are, there are 10 that 10 amendments to the constitution so when the when the constitution was first made there were several amendments the word amendment means certain things were adjusted at one point at a time okay so um those amendments are called the bill of rights all right yeah and basically this bill of rights they protect individual freedom and rights all right for instance you have the freedom of speech religion freedom of um fair trial so you can see that when you are going to unlike in so many other um um dictatorial societies or a, a society that practice um, monarchy system of government you may basically not have certain freedom but in the us you have what we call freedom um, bill of rights that um, explains or expressly put out the various um, rights that they have okay so the next thing you need to know is democracy democracy is a type of government actually that you need to know is a type of government. Uh, we have different types of government. Uh, probably I would, um, I will bring that up in another class, okay? But we have different types of government. It could be, it could be something you take home as an assignment. You go and research on the various type of government. Maybe in our next class, we get to explore and um, understand it. But for the sake of this class, I want you to understand that we have 
democracy and democracy is a system of government so when we say democracy is a system of government we are talking about a type a, a government structure where the power where the power is vested on the people <laughs> they should mute themselves. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So democracy is a system of government where power is vested on the people. So it's not like um we have in um oligarchy, in uh, monarchy in um who can tell me who can mention one more type of government if you have any any idea or if you don't it's fine um aristocracy legislative. aristocracy yeah america got legislative Simple. thank you everyone <laughs> yes thank you thank you monarchy. all right so monarchy. yeah monarchy so in this kind of government, the, the, the power lies with the people. The people are strong in this type of government. So it is important for you to understand that the US runs, this is the government that was embraced in the US. If you go to the history US, you find out that they were colonized by Great Britain and they came out from a monarchical kind of they were they, they once belonged to a system of government where power vested on just one person the the king and the queen right but um after the fight for independence and all of that that's over 300 years ago for independence um the the power had to shift to the people no longer with um an individual right and that is why we we have terms like civic we have terms like bill of rights we have terms like um elect elections we have terms like um representation in government okay so democracy is a system of government which power is vested with the people is the government of the people by the people and for the people that's what democracy is all right and democracy recognizes office of the citizen as the highest office yeah the office of the citizen is the highest office in a democracy yes the president is the number one citizen but he is also a citizen all right he's the number one citizen but he's also a citizen so in the democracy there's the citizen the office of the citizen citizens is the highest form of the city of of of, of um, of power in the democracy because they have the power to vote in and to vote out the government okay they also are responsible for holding the government accountable for their actions the next thing i want you to also know is that america sorry is a republic all right what does it mean when you say when you hear the word republic it means that there is someone um ruling but the person is a representation of the people so the republic emphasizes the rule of law the rule and protection of rights so when you said a nation is a republic it means that those people have come the the nation has come to recognize that whoever is in the office is a representation of the citizens and that the whoever is really must rule based on the rule of law so in the republic the law is supreme in a republic okay so um take note write down these ones i will just i will just give you one or two then i will go into the next slide so check and balances you can write it down if you have a note there if you 
check and balances. Check and balances in the government are the, the mechanism or the system through which power is checked. Power is checked in a democrat in the democratic system. Let's take, for instance, in the democratic system, you have the president. The president will happen to be the number one citizen of the country. However, even though he's the executive, even though he's the number one citizen, he does not have the right to do everything and anything. He does not have the right to do just anything and everything. There are other arms of the government that is responsible to ensure that there is coordination and that there is no abuse of power. So that is what we call check and balances. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll delve into that, but it's important we get to know this federalism, citizenship. I've explained it. Okay, the status of being a particular con um, a particular country and enjoying the right uh, privilege that come with it. Okay, so some people will um, eventually become citizens, American citizens, after probably you stayed for a few years and all of that, and you begin to enjoy the privilege and rights that come from being um, a bona fide um, member of the American society, right? So being a citizen in any country has to do with enjoying all the privilege, all the rights, as well as the responsibilities and the duties that comes with you being a member of that society, okay? If, if, if tax, if, if you are to pay your tax, you must pay your tax, keep to the rule of law, ensure that um, you do the right thing, you maintain public peace and public space, you ensure that um, you go out to vote, if you're eligible to vote and all of that. So this is when you begin to enjoy all of this, okay, it qualifies you to be called a citizen. And in some countries, you have to have stayed for a number of years, you are must have attained certain criteria before you can qualify to be called a citizen. If not, you may, um, they, they, there's another word you use, they call them tourists and all of that. Okay. Lastly, on the terms we need to understand is elections. Elections. So let's, election is how we vote in our leaders and choose who eventually becomes our leader. Okay, quick question before we move forward. Um, can somebody tell me, um, share with me what probably you have understood or any area you want me to throw more light on based on the terms we have, we have discussed now? You just want me to quickly um, clear you on something. Uh, you can go ahead and ask a question. Just one person. Yeah. So is that the third slide you put up or it's the, I'm sorry. So. Okay, so I'm saying based on the terms okay. I've just listed out. Okay, is there anything you want me to clarify? I'll quickly go oh, to no. the next slide. No, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. All right. I, so, I understand what you're, yeah. Uh, thank all you. Right. All right. So now we have the u.s government okay so the u.s got the overview of the u.s government one understand that the u.s operates a federal system okay power is divided meaning that power is divided when you say federal system it means that they structured power they break down power into several factions okay so that power does not lie in just one person so that's what you mean by federal system okay so power is divided between central government and individual states. The division ensures a balance of authority. So if you come to the U.S., states have their powers, then the federal government has its powers. So there, there's a division between the federal government and the state government, and they both um, have their peculiar rights, have their peculiar responsibilities, have the things and the roles they play, in the government all right so the three branches of government okay our components of government in the u.s we have the executive the legislative and the judicial all right 
so they are all government but they are branched out into three and they are the executive the legislative and the judicial okay so quickly the executive is made up of the president the secretaries yeah you have the um the, the president the, vi the vice president the chief of staff the secretaries of our statals okay all of which are part of the executive government then you have the legislative um the legislative has to do with the congress all right the congress we call it the congress in the u.s so call the congress and you have in the congress we are they are divided into two the house of representative and the senate the senate being the upper chamber and the house of representative being the lower chamber so and they are responsible for making the laws they're responsible for making the laws all right so the next one is the judiciary or the judicial system or the judicial branch of the government and they are the judges the supreme court the the appellate court the supreme court the appellate court and the um the high court here yeah. so all these courts different levels of courts about three levels of court in the united states all right so they are responsible for ensuring that the law is kept they're like the like the, the ones that ensures or monitors um how the law is being affected and they are also the ones responsible for interpreting the law okay now these three arms of government we just mentioned actually responsible for ensuring that there is no abuse of power by any of these three arms so the executive watches out that the legislature the legislators do not abuse power the judiciary ensures that the executive does not abuse power so they are both they are checking and balancing each other out right so it's important to understand this intricate um relationship between these three arms of government understand it okay and when you on your own study you'll find out that when you come to the executive they are branched out they are branched out you have many many parastatals many arms under the executive the same with the legislation legislatures and the judiciary okay so um the important documents of the important documents of government important documents of government this question this topic is very very important if you are going to pass your GED examination you need to know these documents you need to research them you need to know them very very important i'm going to be listing them i'm going to be listing them though i didn't I didn't include all of them in the slide, but I'm going to be listing all of them. So if you have a note with you, do well to write them down. Okay, first and the most important, there's a question in your GED, in your GED examination, likely like what is the most important um, document in the United States? The most important document in the United States is the united states constitution the u.s constitution and it was drafted in 1787 it is the supreme law guiding the nation governance so um nobody is above the law so i'll just give you one minute to take down um what you can see because i will need you to research on those documents and in our next class we might probably discuss it just in the next, let's say, 30 seconds. Hello? 
Hello? Yes, yeah, did you get me? So, number one, you have the Constitution, United States Constitution. Number two, you have the Bill of Rights. And like I mentioned, the Bill of Rights has to do with the, the, um, the First Ten Amendments. They are called the Bill of Rights. Okay? And they are specifically, uh, they specifically have to do with the, the privileges and the rights of individuals in the, in the nation. Okay? Number three, you have the Declaration of Independence. Okay? It was adopted in July 4, 1776. July 4, 1776. I'm going to start again so that you can take notes. Number one, the supreme law or the most important document in the United States is the Constitution. All right? It is the supreme law of the land. Hello, can you hear me? All right, so um, it was drafted in seven, ratified in 1787, and it was amended 27 times. Very, very important to take note of this. It might come out in your question. It was amended 27 times. All right, then you have the Declaration of Independence. That's the third document you must know. Declaration of Independence. It was adopted on July 4th, 1776. July 4th, 1776. So where did the U.S. get their independence? Um, that's the question you should know by now because I just said it. 1776. It formally declared the 13 American colonies as independent states free from British rule. Yeah, that was when they declared that they were free from British rule. The fourth, the fourth um, important document you should note is the Federalist Papers. The Federalist Papers, the collection of 85 essays written by Alexander Hamilton. Okay. All right. So it has to do with essays that were written for advocating that the constitution be rectified. Okay, now we move to the next, the next document, Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation Proclamation. I, I recently saw a GED question on that. Emancipation Proclamation. It was issued by President Abraham Lincoln in 1863. Just know the names of this document. They are very, very important. Okay. It declared, and what is it about? What is the Emancipation Proclamation about? It declared all slaves in Confederate held territory to be free. So this is where slave trade was. Um, this is the proclamation that did a great blow or the final blow on slave trade in America. So um, the next is Gettysburg Address. The Gettysburg Address. It is the speech delivered by President Abraham Lincoln in 1863. All right, emphasizing the principles of equality and democracy during the Civil War. Number eight, Civil Rights Act of 1964. Civil Rights Act of 1964. You need to research all these documents. You need to know a little about them. And one of the skills, <clears throat> just a, a, little, um, a little deviation, one of the skills you must have in social studies is your ability to recall dates and timelines. They are very, very important dates and timelines. You need to have them at the back of your mind. So any attachment, any, um, any anything you read that has that you see dates or notable events that marked that era, you need to have it at the back of your mind because you might be asked to date or you know, expatiate on the time or share the events. Uh, I think probably in, in one of our classes, we're going to discuss how to really approach um, social studies questions. So Civil Rights Act 1964, it prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin in employment and public accommodation. So that is why the U.S. is called um, the land of liberty, land of the free. 
because of civil rights act of 1964 so it there's a prohibition on discrimination and the act that brought about this is the civil rights act of 1964. number nine voting rights act of 1965 designed to overcome legal barriers preventing african americans from exercising their right to vote as guaranteed by the 15th amendment so voting rights act of 1965 and lastly number 10 preamble to the united states constitution preamble to the united states constitution so what is the preamble the preamble is the introductory statement the introductory statement that outlines the purpose and goals of the constitution all right hope we got that hello yes all right yes i can hear you okay all right so quickly we make, we move to civic rights and responsibilities civic rights and responsibilities okay so um quick question i asked a question before what makes you what are some of the responsibilities your responsibilities as a citizen and some of you gave me very intelligent um response okay so why is civic rights important in any society that's my question for you why is civic rights important in any society anybody Hello. Say that again, Professor. Okay, so why is civic rights important? Why is civic why are civic rights and responsibilities important in any society? To avoid discrimination. Mm. Avoid discrimination. Good. Yeah. Or uh, racism. Yes, avoid racism. I mean, any other one more person yes to you know guarantee the right of the citizen or to, to guarantee yes to guarantee and protect the rights of the citizen brilliant yes. contribution there brilliant contribution yes. there yeah civic rights and responsibilities are very important okay stacy yes let me hear you go ahead Oh, I was saying um, it protects us too against um, racism. Yes, to protect us, to protect the citizens against racism. So, um, civic rights are very, very important because they, this is what protects this average citizen. Okay, whether you are rich, whether you're poor, whether no matter the color of your skin or your nationality, it is civic rights and these civic rights that protect the average citizen okay um so moving on it's important for you to understand the various rights that you have as a citizen especially in america okay stacy you are still raising your hands do you want to ask question no i'm sorry professor okay I'm sorry all right it's fine all right so it's important you understand the various rights that you have. So I'm going to be running through some of the rights that you have as a citizen, okay? Yeah. First, the rights of freedom of speech, the right of freedom to vote. To religion. Right, yes, huh? of freedom for religion. The uh, right to fair trial. To what? Fair trial. Fair trial, yes, fair trial, very important. Freedom of so, democracy. Yeah, freedom of assembly, yeah. To That's, vote in government, yes, participate yes, in government. Sure, so that's your right. Yes, that's your right. So you, you, it seems you, you guys are just wonderful. I love that. I love that. So um, lastly, nobody mentioned the fact that you have the freedom to petition 
to seek redress. So if you feel your rights have been infringed on by anyone, including the government, all right, you have the right for to seek redress. It's called the right to petition, all right? Okay, so you have the right for equal protection under the law. So equal protection, these are your rights, okay? But as citizens, we don't just have rights. Yes, as citizens, we don't just have rights. We also have responsibilities. Yeah, there is a slogan in America that says, don't think of what America will do for you. Think for what, think of what you will do for America. All right, so it means that as, as citizens, as citizens, you have the right, but you also have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Very important. All right, community service are your responsibilities. All right, jury duty. I know some of you may not understand what the jury duties are, but it means that sometimes you might be expected. If you are a man of integrity, you've lived in the society for quite a long time, you are now respected of appropriate character you could be invited you could be invited to sit in a jury now a jury is part of the judicial system in america where ordinary citizens respected citizens are allowed to be to be in the courtroom to decide on issues that pertain legal petitions okay so you can serve on the jury yeah to to, uh, to contribute your quota in the administration of justice. That is what it means to serve on the jury. You can, um, your responsibilities also includes respect for the law, respect for the law, respect for diversity. So irrespective of color or nationality, your responsibility is to respect everyone, to respect the law, to, res to, to also ensure that you stay informed as a citizen don't be, you are not expected to be ignorant. You are expected to be informed about current events, government policies. What is the government saying concerning every issue, every aspect of the society? You need to be informed about government policies. You need to, you need to ensure that you understand the issues that are bordering the society that you live in. Very, very important. That is what social studies is about, it's about interaction. It's about staying informed about um, issues that bothers you, uh, both you and the society, those people living around you. The next responsibility I want to outline is environmental stewardship. Remember, social studies has to do with how we also relate with our environment. That's why you have geography, you have the environment science under social studies. So how do you relate to your environment? Promoting sustainable practices, um and all form of we are talking about global warming all these issues are most times cited in social studies civic education respective discourse being able to engage respectfully and have a constructive discussion with or constructive interaction with one another very very important in my assignment today you are going to be asked to discuss okay you are going to be asked to discuss so it means that social studies also trains you to discuss and as citizens we must know how to interact to be engage without being violent and without disrespecting the opinions of others and lastly uh, participate in local governance so you want to participate in town hall meetings discussions engage in community level activities if, if you are clearing the, the the surroundings or engaging in one community service or the other, as a citizen, you're supposed to be a part of it. It's by this engagement and interactions, you, you begin to blend into the society and create harmony in the society. Okay, so um, I move to the next slide quickly. All right. So what does citizenship, what does civic participation look like in the U.S.? What does civic participation look like in the U.S.? Uh, let me ask another question. Can somebody tell me what he or she thinks um, civic, but you understand by now, you understand what civic is all about. It means 
your role as a citizen, your responsibility as a citizen, and all of that. So when I ask what are the civic participation like in the US, what are some of what are going to, what are those things you think will be your participation in the US eventually? Becoming a citizen. Yes. So when you eventually become a citizen, what will be your civic participation? What are those the, things that will be your civic participation? Okay. Number one, the, the, the right to vote. Okay, somebody said voting. Okay, yeah, yeah good. Voting. Any other person? Um, uh, Jerry um, Berries. I didn't get can, that. Jerry Berries means uh, we can um, participate. Uh, you know, Jerry Berries means. Uh, uh, Jerry Perez, Jerry Perez, Mr. Wintrell, we can, there is some people that group will 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 can to uh, take decision for the people. Oh, the good, trail. Good. Yeah, good. All right. We have so we have the right to participate in um, our democracy. Yeah, you have the right to participate. So, how would you be participating as a citizen in the U.S.? Um, like becoming a part of the the government, like okay okay seeking um uh, seeking political office yeah but that will be after a while of course yeah we, we can elect the people uh, on government uh, same uh, republic one republic government uh means the president or chief president yeah or, you can elect uh, you can be part of the electoral elect. process yes yeah, so okay let and, me quickly run through let me quickly run through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you all have been so good. All right. So let me quickly run through um, what your participation will be like in the United States. Number one, community involvement. Okay. Community involvement. So um, at a point when you become a citizen of the U.S. or what the civic participation in the U.S. have to do with um, community involvement, it means you are building a vibrant, engaging communities community addressing local issues, volunteer, you can volunteer, volunteerism. So in a civic participation, you volunteer your time, your skills for charitable organizations, nonprofit and community projects. Um, you vote as a civic, as a, as a citizen, you vote. Um, as a citizen, you engage in political activism. You are not, you are not, um, practicing political apathy. Apathy means being less concerned about what goes on in the government, what goes on in the society, what goes on around mm. you. No, you are very active in the political, um, you are involved in political advocacy and all of that. So civic education, you also educate yourself. You stay informed of the latest happenings, what is going on around you, what is going on in the city, what is, what is the government saying? What are the policies they are rolling out? What are the regulations that that governs the that the government is putting out there as set for the people? What are the various um, various government programs that are being rolled out? You need to be state informed. That one needs to be civic educated. Yeah. So um, you participate in public forums like as a citizen, participate in public forums and all of that. Civil, civic engagement, responsible engagement on social media. So you don't abuse the social space, you respect the social space. You need to understand and exercise your right. Yeah, there are, there are many bullies out there. So you need to access, understand what your rights are, understand how to exercise your right in the most civic manner all right so all of these are things that are ways um a citizen participates in the u.s so civic participation in the u.s is largely encouraged okay so it, it goes beyond voting it goes beyond staying informed it goes beyond engaging in community projects okay so it empowers you. Civic engagement empowers you to be one who can shape policies and values that govern society. So the aim of social studies is that you, as a citizen, become a responsible member of the society 
a powerful member of the society because the democratic system gives the power in the US, gives you the power to shape policies, to, to influence how the society is governed, okay? And that is what civic participation is ultimately about, how ordinary people with integrity, with values, shape policies, shape society for the corporate and collective good. Okay, so um, the next is Q and A. Our time is fast spent, so I'm going to open the floor for questions. Uh, should I do this first, or should we go and um, or should we go to the question? All right, so let, let's do this first. I will just take two persons and. Um, First, I want you to share your thoughts, how civic and government systems, based on what I've shared, based on what I've shared um, about the U.S. government, the U.S. system of government, how is there, is there a difference between the U.S. government and your government in your home town or your home country? How, we, how, 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 how are the experiences different from one another? Anybody? who can share with us again please okay so i'm trying to say that i want to hear you i want to know if there is a difference between the american system of government or that mm. i have applied here and your own country in your own country how is it like is there a difference is there similar are there similarities or do we share certain things in common and if there are if there are similarities, what are they? And if there are differences, what are they? Anybody? Just two persons, and we move. Actually, no difference between uh, our country and U.S. Uh, citizen, U.S. government system. The both uh, there is democracy. There is uh, uh, in U.S. citizens, there is uh, in our country we can um, elect the people uh, and vote the people for government system. In U.S. also the same. There is the democracy, okay. and Beautiful. the citizen can can vote and elect the people. And uh, we can participate. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah, beautiful. So you can see that the principles, the fundamental principles of democracy are the same. The fundamental principles of democracy are the same. Um, the only difference we might see are the extent to which are the various institutions that that ensures the free flow of democracy. That's a topic for another day. So let me just take another person um who is who has something entirely different who can tell me oh okay there is a difference between the system there and the system at home at the home country anybody okay so i have a few minutes anybody want to say something okay uh, thank you mr jaron i would like to yeah, go ahead. i am jerome i, I am jerome I what I go ahead I, Go ahead, think, Jerome. I think while while the principle is the same, but the yes. way of of um of what you call um obtaining it is different. Here sure. we, in America, we have the Senate and the House of Representatives. In my country, yes. I can see a similarity. We have the Senate yes. and we have the upper house, but in the Senate. In America, from the House of Representatives, when it goes to the Senate, the Senate has oh, seems Jerome's um, network is quite bad. Oh, okay. Can anybody hear him? No. 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 Okay. Okay. So, um, why we wait for his network to return is important. You understand 
that the principles are the same. Yeah, the principles are the same, but you you see differences in its application. Okay, why the principles are the same? We have countries where um, the rights of citizens are not are not respected to an extent. All right? Okay, Alexander. Yeah, Catherine. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Oh, seems we lost her. All right, so let's quickly do a quiz. Um, let's quickly do a quiz. You can write these questions down. Okay, can can you go ahead? Hello, good morning. I'm sorry. Can I speak? All right, go ahead, Catherine. Um, I I think I can see I miss the whole class because I'm working today and then the time is like eight in the morning for for Chicago. So I would like to know if you can send me some notes. Um. Okay. Let's see how it goes. All right. You in the group, right? Yes, I am. All right. It's fine. So you mean the WhatsApp group? Yeah. Are you in the WhatsApp group? Are you in the Telegram group? I don't have the Telegram group, but I have the WhatsApp group. All right, it's fine. It's fine. So I will, I will, I will, I will we'll look at that. We we'll look at that. Okay. Okay. Thank you I'll very much. That. So, uh, the You're class welcome. is every Wednesday at the same time. Um, the timetable. Just check the timetable on the WhatsApp and just follow the timetable. I would yeah. share, I would share the, the Telegram and WhatsApp group now in the chat box so you can join. Okay, Catherine. All right. Okay, thank you. It's gonna be on All the right. chat. Yes, on the WhatsApp group. Oh, you can okay, also yeah. join okay. the Telegram group as well. Yeah. Before I go, Professor, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. For explaining all this, breaking everything down. It was interested. And thanks, thank bless for doing this. This is so much knowledge for us, you know, because I did it once and I failed. So I'm I'm going back for my second time. I passed and you will um, one, but yeah. So this is very intriguing for me. So I thank you guys very much for coming up with You're this welcome. class. So You're I truly welcome. appreciate you guys. You're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Okay, so guys, just Take down that quiz and try it out on your own. Um, try it out on your own. Try it out on your own. There are, there are just five questions. Number one, what is the purpose of the preamble in the United States Constitution? What is the purpose for the preamble? The purpose of the preamble in the United States Constitution. Then number two, how many articles are there in the United States Constitution? Number three, what is the Bill of Rights? Number four, what is the process for amending the Constitution? Number five, who is known as the father of Constitution? Uh, I think I have more. What is the principle of check and balances in the Constitution? Question seven. What is the purpose of Electoral College? Question eight. What is the significance of the Supreme Court's power of judicial review? Question nine. What is the supremacy clause in the Constitution? Question 10. What is different between expressed and implied powers of congress okay so remember i told you go and study the documents they are very very important you need to know them okay, so this is where we would call it um a wrap um maybe during the week i'm going to send you another assignment but not now okay so this is where we end um the class can you pull back that first that other slide professor i'm sorry okay which I just wanna, oh, this one. go back 
This no, go one. the other one. Back. The other way. Go the other way. The okay. second to last. Second to last. Second to last. Yeah, this one. Thank this you. This one. Okay. Yes. All right. So attempt all these questions. If you can, if you're taking note of the quiz, take note of the assignment as well. Please attempt these questions. Uh, can we quickly do? I don't know if I still have time. This is for next week class. Uh, the assignment okay. is for next week class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Both the quiz, the quiz and the assignment. We'll do it for the. We'll do it next week. All right. Okay. We'll do okay. the correction next week, and um, okay. before we go to the new class for the week. Okay. okay all right guys um can you go to the last slide for, oh good thank you let me just so in conclusion we have covered the basic principle of the u.s government and civic life remember active participation is the key to a thriving democracy all right don't forget that so get okay. to know the document get to know a brief a brief of the various um role of the branches mm -hmm. of government Okay, you are assigned, your assignment is to reflect on a civic issue in the US. Okay, ah, no, 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 no. Your assignment is to, is to reflect on a civic issue in the US and discuss how it relates to the principles we have learned. This reflection will help you apply the concept to reward scenarios. All right, so thank you very much. This is where we call it a day. And um, bye bye, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a blessed day. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome.